You may be aware that Robert Cahaley is one of the best pollsters in the business. Guys like me that live in this world of politics, we absolutely know that. He runs the Trafalgar Group, and he says that the same stealth voters who elected Donald Trump in 2016, he thinks they're about to do it again in November and surprise some people. He predicts they're going to turn out in droves and elect Republicans all over the country in Senate and House races. He might be right about that. He also predict, predicted a President Donald Trump long before anybody else saw it coming. Please welcome back to the show one of the few people in the business that you actually can count on to give solid information, Trafalgar Group senior strategist and pollster Robert Cahaley. Robert, welcome back. You saw something back in 2016, and none of the other pollsters thought it was coming. Um, you are seeing something happening this year. A lot of people are saying this red wave isn't going to happen. Democrats are probably going to keep the Senate, and it'll be much closer in the House, even if Republicans win. They won't win big. Are they right or are they wrong? They're wrong. Uh, simply put. <laughs> in the wake of what Biden did when he when he had that speech that was so threatening yeah and, and with what people are hearing about the fbi being involved with social media and now the government asking the banks to track gun purchases people are nervous and and they don't yeah. want to be put on a list and what we're what we believe in a theory we've been putting out there is that they're just they're avoiding being polled they did it a little bit in 2020 you had to work a little harder to get to them and in 2016 they were they were hesitant to stay there for trump and you had to use some vehicles to find the answer but now I call these submerged voters. It, you know, they don't, they're not putting signs in the yard. There's no stickers on their car. They're not posting on social media. And they're not answering polls at all. We've been approached by people who, who usually would answer our polls and said, hey, I wasn't sure whether that was really you. And, like, they're that, they're nervous. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you can believe that the government is sending people to pro-life people's homes and, and all the other stuff, then why wouldn't you think the governor, government is keeping track of what you say in a poll? Well, a lot of people think they might be, and what, wrong or right, it's in people's heads, and so they're just not participating. So what I've said is I think that we'll do better than all the other polling companies, but the Republican turnout will exceed even what we predict it will be. So will these people go vote, though? That's Absolutely. The big... That's okay. the thing. Because they have no outlet, the only way to scratch that itch is to vote. Hmm. That is the way they get it done. They and, and they're so anxious to vote, they can't wait to vote. See, that's good to hear because uh, even today when we did a live stream, which we do every week, we had some people that would say, well, if I don't trust the election process, is it even worth voting? And I think what I'm hearing you say is it's not only worth voting, it's the only way that we have to change the trajectory of where this country is headed. Absolutely. How many, how many people have watched the ball game? and your team lost to the end when you knew it was a bad call. You didn't yeah. quit watching football. <laughs> you, you said, wait a minute, that might have not gone the way I wanted it to, but it's, I still care, and, and you, st you still tune in next week. Let's talk about some of the races. Uh, Pennsylvania, Fetterman, Dr. Oz, how does that turn out? Well, I feel like at this point, Dr. Oz is going to pull that one off. Fetterman was in kind of a cocoon for like three months after his surgery and after, you know, he had his help and everything was going on. Nobody was like beating on him. It, he, nobody left Oz alone, but it was just kind of like they didn't really hit him. And so he kind of emerged with a little bit of a lead. But now that the truth about his background and everything he's done and not done is coming out and then add to what just happened at the Wawa and in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, there's this idea of this lawlessness, and the last thing anybody wants is to elevate a guy like him who's part of the problem. So let's take a look at your home state, Georgia. You live there. You have a pretty good feel for that. Tight race between Herschel Walker and uh, Raphael Warnock. Uh, predict that one. Well, I think Walker's going to come out on top. We had some recent polls that we did and a few other groups that are worth trusting that showed Herschel having an edge. And, and part of it is that one of the things that's happening is they have spent so much money. They beat up on Herschel so much so early, and it's just almost just to survive that gauntlet, people are starting to, you know, tune in now, and they're like, wow, this, why are they trying so hard? Why are they spending so much money? 
And then Herschel, when people see him in person and interact with him, they're seeing such a huge difference from the way he's being portrayed. And mm. he's spending a lot of time in, in a lot of the black community, and, and he is destroying that base. I have a dozen or more races that I would love to ask you about on air, but can I just ask you for an assessment? How does it turn out? How many seats you predict for the House? How many for the Senate? What do things look like after Election Day? Of course, I realize it may be several months before we get all the votes counted. But hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully not. But w w what, do you, what do you see? Well, put it this way. I can't, I can't possibly tell you what's going to happen in the next five weeks. But what I can say is if the election was next week, I think the Republicans would win the Senate by one or two. And I think they'd probably take the House between 25 and 30. So that would be, we could live with that. We could definitely live with that. Robert, thank you. We always are thrilled to have you here. Absolutely. And uh, if you don't know, you can learn more about Robert, his polling work, and how to keep up with him online. You should do that because he's, uh, I think, one of the only people who's getting it right most of the time. Go to Huckabee.tv. We will get you connected to Robert Cahaley and the Trafalgar Group.